Gorilla Tag is a VR game which you use your arms and body in real life to control your in-game movement. Over time, Gorilla Tag has been gaining popularity due to many different reasons such as the vast variety of mechanics and skills, the competitive nature, and just the unique gameplay of the game itself. The only problem is that Gorilla Tag can be confusing to many beginners of the game, so today, I'll be showing you everything you need to know to get the full Gorilla Tag experience. So whenever you first load into Gorilla Tag, the game will look just like this. Now, you may not have the same color as it is randomized whenever you start the game, so you may not have the same color as me. You could be like yellow or some kind of other color, and you will have two controllers. I recently broke mine, so you can still play the game with two controllers. I mean, with one controller, as you can tell, the controller does actually just snap onto you. But whenever you load in right here, you'll be put in a place called Tutorial, and it will just show you how to like get like the smallest basics, but I'll teach you more soon. So, you want to first of all learn how to walk, so it is different than other VR games. Most of the time you'll use like the trigger to like move and like to spin but instead of this game you actually use your hands and you push down on the ground or you push down on a wall like this so whenever you start you will see this arrow and there will be a bit of a higher elevation right here now there's a couple of ways that you can get over this you can get a hard hit and make it on top you can do this where you just kind of slightly climb up it like this or probably the easiest way to do this and then bounce right off so great now you've passed this part after you just have to do a little bit of walking and then you can start to see the true map so once you get right here there's actually a couple of choices you can go the very simple way which is come up here and now you're up or you can do something which is called wall batting which is like this where you go back and forth in between the walls, which is actually a pretty good way to start. And then there's also a thing called wall climbing, which would be like this, to where you go in between the walls at like a curve. And then there's pinch climbing, which is where you pinch up the wall, which I can't do because I only have one controller right now. But if you want to just go this way, it's perfectly fine. So this is what I'm going to do because this is what most beginners do and this is what I've done. So, you're going to start seeing it right here, and once you cross about this line, like right there, you will actually join a public lobby. It will be a public infection, and what it is, is a game of tag. It's like infection tag, just like what it's called. It's called infection, and whenever you get tagged, you will become a lava monkey. So, let me walk out and I'll show you. So... The game will buffer for a second like this. Hear a little bit of the ticking sound, which I'll explain instead of a second. And there's bush. As you can tell, there's a lava monkey down there. And if you get touched, then you will become a lava monkey with it, and you'll have to attack at other people. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna jump down, and then you're gonna make your way right here, and you're gonna have to slowly make your way. Okay, so to continue. Once you jump down, you want to walk over here. Now this place is called the stump, and the stump has many uses, but I'm just going to show you the starter use, so you can join a private code and be alone, so it's easy to play. So what you want to do, is you want to walk up over here. You want to take like tiny steps, don't make them like too big, and then you just kind of want to slowly make your way up. And don't like hit it high, or else you will go fly flying off like this, and then you want to either hit this off and make this jump or you can just make one big jump up right here so what you want to do is you want to walk into here and then you can come over here and then if you're inside of a code right now and you want to leave it you can hit, hit one so i'm about to teach you the basics of the keyboard so there's a couple of things so there's option one which will kick you out the lobby there's option two which i will show the uses of in a second same as option three so let's just quickly join a code and I'm just going to type in random letters and numbers, and then I'm going to join. And I'm going to also make sure that it's on casual, which I will explain instead of a minute on how there are different types of game modes. So, what you, what you, once you get in, is you want to actually explore this, because this is actually the most important part of the game. 
So, to join a to join a private lobby, obviously type in letters and then hit enter. Enter would join you into something. Delete deletes the characters. So as you can tell, whenever you go one down, there's actually a name tag. So whenever you start up the game, you will actually have a name that will look like this. So as you can tell, mine is Gorilla3345. Now yours is likely different with other numbers, but every single new player starts with the name Gorilla. So you can hit delete and it will delete your name. So you can set it to anything you want as long as it's not like a band name or anything. And then well, I'm just going to put mine to my channel name, which is Neptune. And then once you hit enter, it will show. Now sometimes whenever you type in your name, you have to leave and rejoin the lobby. As you can tell, it didn't actually update. But I'll, I'll, I'll just explain most stuff soon. So you changed up your name. It's fine. You hit enter and now you have a new name. Color is, it uses the red, green, and blue palette. And look at this. Every single time that you touch a color, or every single time that you touch a number, will actually change your color. So, let's just say I wanted white, you would set all the colors over to 9, like this. If you wanted black, you'd set them all over to 0. And then if you wanted like just like an exact red, you have that. Exact green, you, you can get that. And then obviously exact blue, you can get this. So I would just set a random color code like this. This works. Okay, so turn is actually pretty good for competitive. Now you can set it to either snap, smooth, or none. So snap is option one, two is smooth, and then option three is none. So I'm gonna explain what option two is. So, I mean option one is. So as you can tell, it's a like instant turn, as you can tell, like this. I'm turning like a certain amount of degrees instantly. And the higher you turn it up, the more you'll turn. So like this, you can tell that I'm turning a lot more. And then the lower you put it, the lower you turn. Also, if you hold it down, you still spin like automatic. Like I'm holding down it right now, and it's instantly turning me. So the next thing is that they actually have smooth turn. Now, as you can tell, whenever I turn on smooth turn, it's on zero. It's like a very like smooth turn, but it's actually kind of slow. And then you have this, if it would be a 9, it would obviously be a lot faster. Now, the numbers that I recommend for starting is 3. I actually really like smooth turn than snap turn. Snap turn can be useful if you'd like to turn in real life more. But I'd say that probably 4 or 5, probably 5 is the best number to play with. As, it, like, it lets you, like, if you want to, like, turn like this... Or if you need to make like an instant turn off of like a branch and stuff, then it's actually very useful. But I will explain some more stuff about branches soon. So then there's mic. So you can choose option one, all chat, which is where anytime you're talking, you can be heard. You don't need to push down any buttons and you don't need to do anything. So there's all chat for option one. Now option two is right here. Whenever you hear me talking, as you can tell, it does not show a microphone next to my color, which it will do if, see, whenever I push down on the button, yeah, see, if I push down on the button, then what will happen is that it will actually show a little, like, speaker next to it. You do have to talk a little bit loud for it to show, as you can tell some of the times I'm talking, it doesn't pop up, but that's how it works. And then push to mute is the same thing. Also, to talk, you push down the two like buttons like A and B and I think it's X and Y on the other ones. And then you have option three which is push to mute which is the complete opposite. So you talk until you hit down the button. So look, I'm holding down the button, you cannot see me talk. I let go of it, you can see me talk. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it on push to talk like my normal settings. And then this is the cues which is a bit confusing and I'll explain some more soon. So, option one is default, which is like new players and like people who are like also kind of started that can't do the competitive course, which I'll explain in a little bit. So, and then you also have press option two for mini games, and I will explain what mini games are in a while, but not just yet. So, 
if you want to do competitive, you would have to walk all the way over here. It would be instead of this city map, which will be explained in a while. And then you want to walk into here. And then you have to beat this obstacle course. You have to go hit that button. And then it'll give you the competitive queue. So, that is how you get competitive. And once you beat it, you can do competitive, which is a lot more, um, like, competitive, I guess. And it it's a lot for, like, better players. Although, new, newer players and, like, less good players are starting to actually get in. But let's just go on to the next tab, which is group. Now, group is slightly confusing sometimes, but if you read this, it'll say, use this to join a public room with a group of friends. Get everyone in a private room. It has to be private. Press the number keys to select the map. So one for forest, two for cave, three for canyon, four for city. And then while everybody is sitting next to the computer, which is like pretty much like this table over here, over here. And it's probably a bigger section now. It's like probably like this large. And then once you hit enter, you and all of your friends will like join into a private room. And it can be any game mode, which I will explain in a while. And then you are inside of a public code without having to like do it like all like manually. Uh, voice chat is to turn off if you want to hear people like talking inside the game or not. So option two just disables it so you can't hear anybody talking, but you can still talk. And then a and one just lets you hear. Okay, so there's item particles, which I'll explain how some items work instead of a while. And then there's instrument volume. And instrument volume allows just to hear the instruments. And I'll show you a couple of those inside of a minute. You have credits, which explains just like who helped work on the game and who would help. So we can just skip this. Now, there is this tab, which I will blur out my player ID. But this tab will show this and do not show your player id to anyone because it is not good and it can get you tracked which i'm not sure if i'll explain that because it's pretty hard to explain i don't know if i'll have a lot of time to so player id it will show which is like your exact id to like not get into your account but to like know what code you join, know like what you get and stuff. Your version, which is the current version of the game that you're playing, your platform, which could be Rift, Quest, anything else. Build day explains like like I think the last time the game was updated. I'm pretty sure and then build code was like I think like the actual like amount of like the what update it was. So this might mean six hundred and fifty third. I've never really checked out this, but I'm going to get off of this tab because my player ID is showing right now. And that's all for the computer. Now let's talk about game modes. So game modes are a special game where there's four different modes. Now, what happens inside of casual? Casual has no tag, no nothing. All you do is you just kind of like hang out with people. There's no tag. Everything is perfectly fine. And, well, there's nothing that you do inside of it. So, well, yeah, that, that, that's it. But infection is a bit different. So, whenever there's one to three players, you have normal tag, which is this, which I would join a code right now, a different code. And as you can tell, the second I join the code, I will completely change. Oh, give it a second. There we go. As you can see, I completely change. So. If I were to be with somebody, and I were to tag them, I would not be this color anymore. I would go back to normal. And the thing is, is whenever you're actually tagged like this, you can actually get a, a speed boost. I think it's like, point, like times two of the speed, maybe even more. 0.25 times the speed. And it's just, it just gives you a lot more speed. It can be pretty good for practicing. Like, if you want to, like, practice, like, form or something, but it's not the best for, like, actual, like, full practice. But, yeah. And then whenever there's four to ten players, it actually becomes a completely new game of Infection Tag. So, Infection Tag is kind of what you saw earlier, what I kind of explained, which is where 
I will turn like lava ish, which I still have a speed boost, but it isn't that good. And whenever I get tagged, I'm actually still the person who tagged me is still actually lava, and I am still actually lava. So, everybody, uh, until the last person is lava, and once the last person is tagged, the game will actually just restart. So, yeah, what the game restarts and there's one chosen lava monkey at the very start of the game and just keeps on repeating over and over but now there's hunt which is actually a slightly different game which i will join just i'll just add an extra leather now this can be kind of hard to show because i have it like this but as you can tell there's a on my wrist i'll show a picture on the screen of what it actually looks like whenever you see it and what it shows is it will show like hunt is a game where you're given a specified player inside of the server to tag and once you tag them they'll turn into like a bluish kind of monkey kind of like uh the next thing i'm about to explain or kind of like the rock monkey because you also have another high speed boost but it'll change you into like a special kind you know speed you up and if you get like hunted down and you get tagged and if you touch someone it will actually slow them down so if you were to be instead of hunt and you tag somebody and you're already like killed and you're like a blue monkey you can actually slow other people down which is actually a really cool thing now if you're still in you can look down at your watch and you can see your target it will say the meters away it will say their cosmetics and their name also their color too their color also and yeah, I'll just say like the meters away, and once you tag them, you get a completely new target, which is most of the time, the target that you have, you get their target after. So, it's pretty much the game until there are two people left. Once there are two people left, the game's over, because obviously, one person can't, they can't hunt down each other, or else it'd be kind of a weird glitch. So, that is it for hunt, now let's go on to paint girl. Paintball is, or paint brawl, is a bit different. Now, once I get this, right here, it's actually a slingshot. Now, if, if I were to have a second hand, I could pull it back, and I could actually shoot like a little ball. And once there's actually only one person, unlike Hunt, there has to be four people. And unlike Infection, there has to be four people. Hunt actually starts as long as there are two people instead of a server. And all you do is you just pull back the the thing and once you shoot somebody with it uh they will lose a balloon which everybody starts out with three balloons and once they lose a balloon or once they lose all of their balloons the game is over and it restarts unless if there's multiple people then it's till everybody's out on the team okay so now that i've explained pretty much all the game modes I'm gonna start going into, okay, sorry, the, the rest of the footage just got corrupted, so I have to quickly redo this. So, what happens whenever you're instead of paint brawl? If you get, like, like, shot down and you lose all your balloons, and you shoot somebody again, you can actually slow them down, but it's really high. It's not like Hunt, where, like, it would, like, slow them down just a bit. It, like, really slows them down. So... Now that I've explained all of the game modes, I'm going to show the maps and, like, their basics and kind of how to, like, beat them unless that they're, like, not needed. So, I'm going to start that. Okay, let's go. So, this is Forest. This is the first map of the game, and it has changed a bit since its first release, but I'm going to explain the four parts of this. So, the four parts are ground, branches walls and kind of like extra like obstacles so i'm gonna start with the one that you will likely start out with whenever you start which is ground it pretty much consists of the grass the slide right here and the gazebo and i guess you could include the fire pit and the lanterns now ground is pretty much a part of the map that you want to stay off at all costs because as i said the lava monkey actually has a, a boost 
and it can run faster than you, so obviously you want to try your hardest to stay away from the ground because it's easiest to catch up to you on ground as there's not a lot of places to move on compared to like the walls or the branches. And ground, it can be used a lot if you're more of a competitive player and you know how to like move like very quickly other than like this. So yeah, it's ground isn't that easy to like explain and there really isn't a lot with it. So I'm gonna go on to probably the second most known thing, which is walls. Now walls have a lot of different mechanics put inside of it, such as wall climbing, which is like this. And then you have wall running, which is like this. And then you also have backwards wall running, which is like this. And then you have a Lucio, which I can't do because you need two hands. But what you do is you kind of like put both hands onto the wall. And you can kind of go like up like this. And then you can make it up. You can do this on any part of the wall pretty much. And it's a really good mechanic to use. There's also vertical, which I don't think you guys can even do it all, which is where you just pretty much go straight up the wall, and you make it up to the next level of the walls, which are actually called slippery walls. So slippery walls are a way to make people originally get out the map, which was earlier, which was later replaced with the red walls. Now, slippery walls, you can tell how long I stick onto the walls for it like this, but whenever I get onto the slippery walls, you can tell that I actually slowly slide down since they're slippery. Now, the next layer is called red walls, which are very slippery and they are impossible to use. Because they are so slippery that you can't even like touch them. And if you touch them, then you go like flying down. So, <laughs> it's just a way to like stop people from getting off the map because and pretty much before the Christmas update, people could easily just wall run out of the map. And it would be kind of annoying. So, yeah. So they had added that. But now let's start with the next mechanic, which is called branching. Now, or which is called <laughs> branches. Now, branches consist of trees and stump, which is that place over there. Now, what you need to branch is you pretty much just go from tree to tree or branch to branch and you just kind of jump from them. Now there's many mechanics from the tree section of the game into branches, into under branching. Branching and branches and trees, whatever you want to say, has a lot of different things. It's a lot more hard to learn, but it's a lot more easier or it's a lot more harder to get chased down on branches and it's a lot I would say more fun to play with and it's a lot like you have a how should I with this you have tons of choice to do there's different types of branching and there's tons of different things like there's branching but there's also something called tree scaling which is we could go up like this and you make it to the top of the tree. And you can do this to pretty much other every tree. Something called under branching, which is like this, where you go under the branch and then you get up here. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into stuff because obviously it's a lot. Now, I'm gonna talk about the final thing, which is extra objects, which pretty much include these platforms, tree house, double walls, which is a very useful thing to the game but I don't really like them. Now platforms are this little ramp that actually you can slowly climb up like this and it's the easy way to traverse around the map without having to like branch or learn like different other mechanics to get up. It's a nice way for beginners to learn like the power of the jumps because you, don't, you obviously don't want to like make this jump and then like jump over it somehow and it also lets you control your jumps because you don't want to try to jump towards it and like go like flying off. Now I'm going to talk to you about double walls which is a popular thing for beginners 
Now, as I said that you could learn it's a tutorial, there's actually wall bouncing, if you remember, which is where you go in between wall to wall and you make it up. There's also something called elevator climbing, which is where you put your hand through like this and then you just kind of push yourself and then the final thing, which I cannot do right now, is called pinch climbing. So where you do this, which I'm just gonna kind of show you. It's where you like put like both of your hands, like right here, but it's on the like this. The other hand is on like this side. You kind of do like circles like this, and you just kind of like push your way up. But that is all for the forest. Now I'm gonna explain what the other map is, which is canyons. Okay, so this is the next map that was added to the game, which is canyons. Now canyons consist of three things, which is walls, ropes and zip lines, which are I'm gonna combine together, and just like other objects that kind of like put the map together. So I'm gonna start with the first thing, which is zip lines. Now, Zip lines are a thing where if you push down the bad grip, which as you can tell you are if you're doing this, and then you touch it, you will actually get pushed down really quickly, and then you'll come back up. It, there are tons of different zip lines around the map. As you can tell, there's one right there, over there. There's one actually around the whole entire map, which is actually pretty cool. But then there's ropes. So ropes are like this, and what you can do is you hold down the trigger again, they do move, and then you hop up, and then you can come up, and you can do this, and you made it up. These are also ropes, but I don't really mean it like this way, because these ropes obviously aren't grabbable. You can do something like this, I guess, but these ropes are not grabbable. And, well, that's pretty much all for ropes and zip lines. Now let's go into walls. So... Walls are pretty much like walls inside of forests, but they're a bit different. There really isn't a lot of places to, like, wall climb in Lucio. It's more of like a supported, like, wall run, like this. As you can tell, there's, like, a curve. Or it can get really hard where you're trying to, like, this is slippery walls, pretty much. But I think they're actually a bit more slippery here than inside of forest. These are slippery walls here, which are the lighter walls that go across. And these, this map does not have red walls. It actually has an invisible barrier, which I will explain probably later. And it's just an barrier where if you try to go up too high, it will shove you down into the map. And, well, you, you can't get out of the map. Some people can, but... I'll explain how like getting out the map works later. I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself. Now, the other thing is extra objects, which pretty much include like any of these like broken down like houses, any houses over there, cactus, or just like the ground, which isn't that popular of like a thing in here because it's mostly objects and stuff. But let's go into the cave map, which. I'm not even going to cut a transition for this because, sadly, Caves is shut down. Now, I'm, I might be, a, I don't even know how long this video is going to take to edit and stuff, so I might be able to squeeze something in for this, but this is currently Caves. It used to be like a crystal type of area where if you were to go in a crystal, it would make like tons of like crystal sounds. It was probably my favorite map of them all because it also had like mines, but recently it has actually been barricaded by tons of rocks and well, you can't play it. So if it updates soon and it's unbarricaded, I will continue this part of the video for it. But for now, let's just go into the next map. Okay, so, city, which is actually placed right here, once you come from stump, it's actually placed right here, you're gonna walk into here, you're gonna walk in, ignore this, I will explain it instead of a while, and you have city, now, 
time to explain some things. Now, once you walk into the city, there's going to be a lot of stuff. I'm going to explain this one by one. So, the first thing is right here. You have leaderboard, just like inside of forest. You have an ATM, which I will actually explain instead of a bit. You have a cosmetic try-on area, which I'll explain what cosmetics are in a bit. Then you actually have an inf info board, which I'll read for you. Welcome. Every day you visit Gorilla World, you'll get 100 shiny rocks. Add cosmetics to your cart, then head to the dressing room to try them on. Purchase items in your cart at the checkout counter. Now come over here. Change your worn cosmetics in the wardrobe next door, or in the tree. You can purchase more shiny rocks at the ATM. No tag here, just chill out. So, that's one thing, is that city has no tag, has no paint brawn, has no hunt. So it's only, it's pretty much just a casual map. Unless you are private, you can play tag in here. So, I'm gonna just bring you this way, which is gonna be our first destination, which is the nice gorilla store, as it says up there. Now, when you get in here, you will see multiple places which I'll split up which is your shiny rock balance your the clothing room and like the main shop and then I'll explain second floor and third floor in a while so once you walk in you will instantly see this now whenever you start out the game and it's your first day playing you actually have 500 of these I only have 100 right now because I had actually recently bought something now as you can tell you will get shiny rocks every 24 hours now I got mine an hour ago so you'll get 100 every single 24 hours and shiny rocks is actually the currency to buy these kinds of cosmetics which over here completely ignore this I'll explain this instead of a while now there are different kinds of like cosmetics as you can tell there is hats hats then this is neck I think no this is like shoulder that's like shoulder and then you have hat, also like shoulder, hat, 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 these are both hats. And then you have badge cosmetics. Oh wait, these are what they're called, sorry. These are called badges and badge, even though they aren't badges. Now these are all pins, which are part of the badges thing. And there's actually badges for different maps, not all of them, but there's the gorilla badge. This badge which shows fours. This badge which shows caves, as you can tell there are crystals. This badge shows canyons, as you can tell there's little canyons, and then there's the cactus. This one shows city, and then this one shows mountains, which I will show you that map instead of a little bit. So, I'm gonna show you the four types of cosmetics, which is face, head, badge, okay, face, hedge, badges and holdables now, now the holdables are actually split into different things there's actually rings there is like things that like go on your neck holdables that will like come from your back and holdables that will come from like your shoulder which you get which you hold down the trigger for so i'm gonna come up here and once you get over here you can actually come up this area and you can tell that there's actually more cosmetics. Over here consists of the fruit store, which is the banana, the coconut, and the pineapple. There's nothing else on this floor, so let's quickly go up. So, once you get up here, you'll see the medical area, or the sickness area, which has the mask and the... Why can't I can't think of it right now? And the doctor's face thing. And you have the piercings, which has the earring, triple earring, eyebrow stud, and nose piercing. And then you have the goggle over here, the goggle shop, which is tunnel vision goggles. And then you also have the eye patches. So you have left eye patch, right eye patch, double eye patch. And then if you did actually jump right down here, you would notice that there's actually a sunglasses shop. Now, with this sunglasses shop, sunglasses shop, you can see these sunglasses, the other, the tortoise sunglasses, the circular ones, the spiky ones, and then it looks like the fire sunglasses. Now, if you come back here, 
there's actually these too. There's the angry eyebrows. Now, these, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Most of the time, this is now, which I'll explain in sort of a second. But pretty much every single, like, season, or every single, like, month, the game actually updates with this. They will add seasonal cosmetics, as you can tell, since it's summer. Added summer splash cosmetics, which, you have Ducky, you have this, you have all of this, and all of these cosmetics. Now, this may actually look different for you, depending on which update you watch this in. You could be watching this in, like, the fall update, the Halloween update, and stuff, but... Over here, there's actually also something called a flashback. Now, a flashback is pretty much where cosmetics from last year come back. So, pretty much one year ago, there was a rainy update where they had all of these cosmetics. And since it's been a year, these actually come back. And you can actually rebuy them. Now, cosmetics that are free, whenever they do come back, they start to cost money again. And this, these umbrellas are actually part of the rainy flashback. So... Let's just say, like, you get a cosmetic, but you don't want to buy it yet because you want to try it on. So, once you click a cosmetic button like this, it will turn red and it will say remove from cart. And you can come into here, and you can click if you want a cosmetic on. As you can tell, I put on the egg, and it shows up on here. If I want to put on these, which is actually a holdable, which looks like this. It's like a boot, a face cosmetic, the eye patch and like a head cosmetic which is on my head so yeah you have all those kinds of cosmetics now the final part of this place is actually the balloons now the balloons came out into the paintball update paint bra update and most of the time here there's actually a seasonal balloon which comes with the update as you can tell sun update comes or the summer update comes with a sun the Halloween come update came with a ghost. The Thanksgiving update came with a turkey. So, balloons are poppable with either a slingshot or a bow, which is sometimes it's inside of a store and you can buy it. And it's like a bow that you can like shoot. It doesn't give you anything. All it does is just work the same as a normal slingshot. But yeah, you can just kind of push around a balloon, and if it gets shot with like a slingshot or with a snowball, which is actually inside the mountain map, which I'll explain inside of a while then it will pop. Now, to hold a balloon, you would pull it out, and you'd pull down this trigger to take it off of your backpack. Take it to, to take it off of your bag. And then, as you can tell, there's also a, another back cosmetic, which all cosmetics you actually hold with this button. And some cosmetics, as you can tell, they're actually, like, usable. Like this. If you click this trigger, sometimes some of them will work like if there's like a squeaky toy you can actually like squish it and then some cosmetics are like drinkable and like edible if you put them up to your mouth now to explain the final part of i did not actually explain this yet the, the main part of city which is to buy cosmetics now if you do not have enough to buy a cosmetic it will say it will say insufficient insufficient shiny rocks for this item and if you already own this cosmetic which i don't think you would own any yet it would say you already own this item so if you were to start up the game unless if any cosmetics are free you would you would be able to get this party hat you you would be able to get this bow tie or you can get this sweat headband over here these are all the ones that you can get the second you start the game just making sure okay so when you come over here, you can hit this, you, you can hit like, yes, I want this item, and then it's like, or it's like, are you sure you want this, and you're like, yes, and then like, do you want this item, and it'll be like, another confirm. So, let's just say like, you really badly want an item, but you don't have enough shiny racks for it. This is what the ATM is for. So, you will click begin, and you can click balance to see your balance, which is easier over where I showed you, and then you can hit purchase. Now, there's... $5 for a thousand, $10 for 2200 and $20 for 5000 Now, I'm not going to buy any of these just for the video, but you can if you need more shiny rocks and stuff. And speaking of buying, every once in a while, the game will update and add a brand new pack. Now, as you can tell, there's a summer splash pack currently, 
which may be different for the updates that you're in. Most, pretty much all the time it comes with an, a cosmetic like this. And if you're lucky, it will actually come with a certain amount of shiny rocks. So this one came with 10,000 for $30 which it's a very good deal so if you're playing this and you just kind of want to get some shiny rocks and you want to start out the game definitely get that as it is a very good deal and the last part now last part of city is the competitive which i've already talked about which consists of your skills to be able to make it to the very end which will give you a competitive queue which again i've already talked about and it says make it to the end of the obstacle course to unlock the competitive queue. Now, that is all for city. Now let's go into mountains. Okay, so this map is a very different map compared to the others, which I was split it up. I, I can't even split this up as so much stuff. So once you get in, there's a igloo to your left, which lets you try, put on your cosmetics and try them on. And it comes with your normal computer and your normal game mode chooser. So let's just say you want to like do something so you can tell that there's a difference between these two okay well i just kind of spoiled it okay but you can tell that there's a difference between these two obviously it's more blue which is actually ice now what you do to come on the ice is if you were to just sit down obviously you don't slide but if you were to come right here you can actually slide down now if you want to control you just put your hand on and you can kind of like steer it like side to side and then you can like just kind of do like anything you kind of want so <laughs> you can just steer in the ice now there's something inside of this map called wall surfing which i will explain instead of a bit but once you make it down to the bottom of the map there's actually this fan right here now this may be a completely new thing to you but what you want to do is you want to jump in right here. You just want to jump into the fan and it will launch you flying back up to the other map. This used to not be here until the game had actually updated. They completely changed up this map and they added a fan. Which makes it very easy for beginner players. So, there's something called wall surfing. Which is where you would pretty much do this on the ice. But instead, you come onto the wall. And... I mean, you just kind of like surf it like this. As you can tell, I'm just kind of like going up on the wall. Now let's actually get to the really fun part of the map, which is the slides. As you can tell, there are little slides around the map, including this. Now what you want to do is you can go up these stairs. Make sure not to fall off as these are not slippery. Climb up these stairs and you make it up there. Now, you can go down this huge slide, which if you go down, you can go flying like pretty much like any angle around the map you want to, but let's go over to the main slide. Now, once you jump in, you can, can kind of control with your arm a bit, but you don't even need a touch. Now, right here, there's actually this little like section. Now, right here, you can choose to jump if you want to, or you can choose to not. Now, if you jump, you actually go up on this upper slide, and if you don't, as you can tell, there's actually a little slide down there, which will launch you out right there. Now pretty much what you do is if you go on the upper slide you'll actually go right there as you can tell again the smaller slide and it'll just kind of like go out you can see the outside of the map and it's pretty cool that it's like split up into like multiple slides so there's like a variety but yeah that's the slides mountains i can't really explain that well and you can walk on top of the slides there's a little ramp up here where you can go flying I don't want to say too much because I kind of want you guys to like experience it yourself, but this is kind of like the full like gorilla tag explanation. But let's go into one of the craziest maps yet, which is the basement. Okay, so just to explain, the basement is back here. So you can see the mountains over here, and you can see that city is over here. So what you want to do is you want to walk up here. You can come back here and there's a little dungeon door now obviously you can't get through but what you do is you put one of your hands on this and it'll push down the thing and you can make it in now that you're in hold on wait i'm gonna quickly mute this i'll explain you the inside of a bit but now that you're in you can tell that this is actually a really small map 
You cannot play tag inside this map, sadly. I wish you could, but you can't. Unless you're inside of a private. And what you do is... Well, obviously, this map looks pretty small. Now, let's just walk into the... Let's just walk into here. You can actually become small inside this map. As you can tell, the maze that I saw earlier is actually big now. So, what you do inside of this maze is you have to escape or, what I'll explain after I show you how to escape, you can actually become small, which I, will, I actually don't want to spoil it fully yet. But you can walk around, and if a monk guy, which you will see inside of a minute, um, shoots you down, then you can actually avoid it. So, I hear one right over here. Now, there's two things that you can do. So, most of the time, if you get shot down, you actually go through the map. But you can actually avoid it if you hold down onto this, and then you can kind of just walk by. So, I kind of messed that up wrong. But you can actually see now, if you fall, there's actually this area right over here, which is actually pretty cool. Now, you can see this, which I will explain inside of a bit. And you can actually open up this treasure chest, and it will show a little, like, squeezy cosmetic, which actually makes noise. Although it is 4,000 shiny rocks, which is equivalent to, obviously, 40 days. Now, let me quickly walk out, and I will time lapse until I get back in. So, once you make it back over here, you want to walk this way, across this corner, come over here, make it this way, come around, and then turn this way. Try to stay a well distance away from the monsters because y you don't want to get shot down. Now, you can actually walk over here, take a turn this way, come right here, I accidentally messed that up. You can take a turn this way, come right here, and then over right here, and then the last turn, which shows another test. Don't walk out yet, because you will become big, but you can actually hit this chest, and you get a free badge, which looks a little weird, but it, I mean, it's free, so walk out here, you can become big again. Now I'm going to show you the very cool secret of this map. So you can do is follow where I go. So you pretty much want to go on the same exact route that I had done, but you want to stop at a certain part. So I'm going to probably get chased down by one of them. And as you may have seen me do, you don't actually need to touch down on there. It's just an easier way. You can actually put on this torch too. It's a lot less thin. But here, let me quickly get over here. And let me wait for them to chase me. So, you want to go the way that you had gone earlier. Across this corner over here. Make it this way. You want to come all the way down this hallway. And let me make sure that he's behind me. You want to make sure that one of them is actually chasing you. Cross this right here. Now, you can actually sit either. There's a little coin right here. It says C or wait, say G. I think it says C. You can sit on this or you can sit inside this corner. As long as you're like in between here, but I'm gonna sit on this because it gives you the best results. And you'll get brought down. And as you saw earlier, there's actually a cage. No skeleton over here. Make sure you don't get your head stuck because you will have to restart your game. But what you do is jump down here. And then it's just another way to exit. And then you'll just become big again. Or it's actually a bit different. Um happens is you stay small now it makes sense why this map is actually so small because what you can do is you can pretty much run around anywhere you want now the cool thing that has been added not 
way too recently, but it has been added slightly recently, is actually mouse holes. Now you can see one of them over here, so there's actually three. There's one right there, one right there, and if you see it, it's between the couch and the table, right here, as you can tell, in between the couch and the table, and whenever you go up to them, it actually brings you up to... Okay, you know what? While I wait, I'll, I'll give you a little quiz, okay? And you might get it right. Now, you're about to find out. So, pretty obvious where this brings you, though, which is up here. And now you're at the top of the map. All of them bring you up to the same place. As you can tell, the entrance is right there. Wait, I'll make it a bit easier to see. The other mouse hole entrance is right there, and the other mouse hole... I mean, the other mouse hole exit, this is exit, this exit, and then that exit down there. If you want to leave this map, all you have to do is go through the pain of climbing up this whole entire staircase. Now, let me quickly try to make this up. You want to just climb up this whole entire staircase. Now, once you make it up here... You don't have to do it the way that I did, but you could just climb up straight up like the ramp. And then, what you want to do is, you just kind of want to walk up here. As you can tell, you slowly are becoming bigger. And once you cross like this line right here, you'll become big instantly, and you can't go back down. If you don't cross this line, you can just jump right back in, and you'll still be small. But, that is all for this map. Now, let me explain the next map, which is probably my least favorite, which is the cloud map. Okay, so this is the cloud map and or within the file is called the sky jungle, which you're going to walk in right here and all you're going to do is jump. Once you jump, it's going to be just like the fan and you're going to be brought up to the cloud map. Now, this cloud map is actually a lot different from the others. As you can tell, the second you get on here and you jump, you go a lot higher as you can tell look look at the height i can't even make it up high compared to here and i can easily just make it up now whenever you walk into anything just like this which i call the wind tunnel you actually will go straight up without even having to jump you know bring you up now not all objects in here are actually like a like boost it's only the clouds but actually, over here, there are actually little houses, which consist of, like, rugs, TVs, dishwashers, which is actually right over here, and tires and dishwashers. They're all pretty different, but some of them actually include this, which I'm still not even sure what it is. When you walk into here, you can hear this weird sound. I'm not sure what it is. It might be something that, like, just, like, jar of, like, an animal or something. I'm not even sure, but... This map has had many glitches into the past, as most people will know. Uh, you can kind of just go around this map. There's tons of vines which you can like, jump from, like this. Uh, there is moving platforms, which is one of the pretty the first time that's actually been seen into the game, where there's moving objects that you can jump from, like this. Which is actually, was actually a really cool addition to the game. But yeah, you can just kind of do some parkour. It is, as you can tell, a little buggy. As I just teleported right through the thing. And then you can kind of like climb up here. There's a lot you can do this with this map. And don't be scared. Because if you think that you're going to fall off the map, you can't. There's actually a wind barrier which pushes you back. So let's just say, oh, I wonder what happens if I jump off the map. So I'm just going to jump right here. You can hear the sound, and it will just push you off. Make sure not to get stuck like that. <laughs> and, well, it's pretty much all for Sky Map. It does have a lot of things, but they're all pretty much the repeat of the exact same, like, type of, like, object, which is clouds, which you can jump from, or just, like, vines. It's just a lot of, like, duplicated things. But it's actually a really cool map, because this actually came out with the launch of Gorilla Tag. So Gorilla Tag was inside of something called App Lab, if you know what that is. It's like a, it's like the beta of like a game, or like an early release, before it fully comes out. 
like to like the store like you know how like beat saber is how like it's like fully out to the game or like pavlov or anything like that it's i don't even know if pavlov's actually out or let's just say like rec room or like beat saber or pretty much any type of game like that then it well it's out now it came out with this it was like december or something before the christmas update but let's just go to the final map which is the newest map which actually came out like two weeks ago it is called the beach and or oasis map okay so for the final map you want to what you want to do is you want to make your way out of stump you can see the gazebo over here if you walk over to the pretty much the east of stump you can actually make your way right here you can walk through this tunnel this is probably the hardest map to get to because it actually requires a bit of skill and i can make your way over here down here you can either use the water or you can go the easier way which is to use older mechanics which is the zip line and then what you can do is you can use the rope to get up or you can kind of just like go up on like ledges like this or you can just kind of if you're really good which i don't think most of you guys are if you're just like starting out the game which is what this is kind of for or if you're trying to find the like tutorials for some stuff you can just make it up once you make it up you can see there's a completely new mechanic which is water now there's also zip lines like this, which lets you tra traverse the map, which I will explain right now. So, there's pretty much these things. There's ground, water, and air. Now, ground consists of pretty much everything but air and, <laughs> but air and water. And water is th the water which is blue as you can tell it's it's blue it's blue and well this map also has i don't know why i'm stuttering so much this map also has air which consists of the ropes and zip lines which was another mechanic taken from canyons now what i'm gonna do is explain the brand new mechanic that we've learned which is swimming now the second that you jump in here you everything turns blue like a bluish kind of shade and to swim i'm just going to show you the easiest way is to just like push down like this now there are many faster ways to swim which is like some people can like walk on the water and stuff and they can just go like flying but that's like how you swim. Like you just kind of like really like push your arm like in any way. You can also do this even with one hand. You can still like kind of like spin your arm in front of you like this, which is a simple way. And yeah. So this map also has many other things. Like there's actually a diving board over here, which as you can tell, yeah, I'll show you difference. Look at how high I jump right here. Look at how high I jump right here. It's a lot higher compared to this. And obviously you can make like further jumps like this. You can make this jump. So that's a way to get some boost. And now let's talk about the other objects. So there's this right here, which allows you to actually get some boost. It's, I don't think it's as much as the um, diving board, but you can still get a obviously higher boost higher than like normal because you can jump up high yeah pretty simple jump up and you can make it up uh other objects you have these don't give you boost these don't give you boost yeah okay oh, i'm starting to trick me these don't have any boost and these obviously don't have any boost now there's actually a part of the water which I haven't explained yet, which is actually the streams or the rivers. So, if you were to jump into some place like right here, I'll show you the two streams. And if you were to swim your way down to right here, I'm not even swimming, as you can tell. I'm hoping I'm going to get out the water. As you can tell, I'm not even swimming. I don't even have my other controller. I'm not even swimming. It's just pushing me down. 
And then you just get dropped down into the water like this. And then, well, you're done. And then, you can also get up over here. There is another stream, which I'm not going to go into. But it just brings you down a waterfall, pretty much. This, you can't go on because you can jump in, but there is no way to get up there unless if you, like, have mods, which I'll explain in seven another part of the video. But right here is stream, which it seems more like a water slide almost, which kind of like brings you down curvy and just plops you right into the water. And that is all for the maps. Now I'm going to start explaining some of the like common like terms and like basics of the game. Okay, so first term is mini games. Now you may not know what a mini game is whenever you're a first starter. But a minigame is pretty much a, like, a type of, like, a separate game, which is mostly pet infection, but can also be put together with Hunt or Paint Brawl. It's pretty much, like, a game made by, like, the players, not, like, by, like, the owners of the game. It's not, like, you can, like, select it. It's mostly played inside of private lobbies separately, because it's, like, different than tag. It's not like there's, like, a minigames thing. But this actually is where the minigames queue comes into. So you can actually play minigames if you join the minigames queue, which is where you mainly ask to play minigames. <laughs> now, once you're into the private lobby, you can actually play, there's tons of different minigames, like there's Monkey on the Shelf, there's Crates, there's Eviction, there's Mall Rush, Sacrifice. Th th there's just a lot. And I'm not going to explain them instead of a video. You can go look up, like, Gorilla Tag minigames, and you'll see, like, tons of videos on it. And, well, yeah, mi minigames are just, like, games created by, like, the players of Gorilla Tag, not by the owners. And they just have, like, their own, like, separate kind of rules, and they're actually pretty fun. Okay, so this isn't really, like, a, m the main part of Gorilla Tag. But this is actually a very good reason why Gorilla Tag has actually really gotten popular, which is actually the content creators. Now, content creators that are mainly popular consist of J Man Curly, VMT, Elliot, Styled Snail, Fadu, like pretty much like any like slightly like big person. Some other lists would be like Super X Clyde, The Old Spice. Now, many people do like different kinds of content creation, like montages. Now, a montage, as you may know from probably other games, is pretty much where you just, instead of like a map, and all you do, you just kinda like run away from lava monkeys and you just kinda like show off your skills while you're like doing like random like branching stuff or like verticaling up walls. You could probably look up Girl Attack Montage and see what I'm talking about. Some popular montage people are Mosa, Vest, Peb, there's a couple of other ones like Webby. You get, there's a lot of girl attack montages, it's a pretty popular like place. And then you have entertainment, which I would actually kind of say is more of like Elliot, uh, J-Man Curly, K K9, K9 does some good entertainment ones. But he also does update videos, which I'm going to explain in sort of a second, but entertainment is like maybe playing like, even like playing like mini games is like entertainment, and then like playing with fans and stuff, which is my next thing that I'm going to explain is live streamers. Another source of content creators is live streamers, which is pretty obvious. They just do live streams and they play with fans instead of like private codes. That's all they do. They can play mini games instead of private codes. They just hang out. And well, yeah, that's, that's what they do. Now, other thing which isn't that big as much is Gorilla Tag animators, which make like animations, either like sketch like animations or like blender animations you know what that is maybe even like do like unity sometimes but yeah with like blender animations and mostly on the comedic side but could also be like 
show like showcasing like stuff that that you could add for the game but let's go on to update videos which most of the time explain like update videos like the summer update or like a bug fix update this is more of like styled snail uh part of canine but canine makes it a bit more like entertainment than styled snail which is more like focused like just on the update i guess but yeah it's just showing off the update and there's one more which is pretty much soundboards and just pretty much soundboards and like mods which i will explain what soundboards i mean it's pretty obvious you should know what a soundboard is if you're playing this game but i'll explain what mods do instead of a minute but what they'll do is they'll like troll using like soundboards they'll play like sounds they may use like voice trolling which is also another video which is trolling videos where they'll pretend to be like a ghost which i'll explain instead of a minute ghosts are like okay i know that this is stalling but i am not noticing how many times i've been stuttering and saying how many times i would explain it instead of a minute so I'm just gonna explain some stuff right now. Ghosts are pretty much a made up thing which became popular a while ago, or like near the start of the game. The main one started out as Echo PB PB PBV PBBV P B B V. There. One P, two Bs, and then one V. So Echo that guy, Banshee, also by that guy, I mean PV VV. Okay, PV VV, Echo, Banshee, and then Daisy09, which is pretty much the most popular one, I'd say, which is still like trolled as today. And there's also somebody called like Mirror Man, which are the more popular ones. There's like Mirror Man, Shadow, just some other random ones, which I'm not gonna lie, kinda suck. They, I liked it whenever they just had like the like four main ones. Banshee was terrifying. I always thought that out of nowhere, like he'd come out of like the treehouse and be like, <laughs> I don't know. It was just terrifying. Now, I'm gonna explain mods. As I said, that there were mod trolling content. Mods can be illegal and legal. Now, I'm gonna sit down for this because I've been standing up for a while. Now, whenever you get mods, it's through a, like, third-party thing, you, you use Steam, which is also purchasable on Steam, which is for, like, $20, which was actually made to stop mods on why it's so much. But you'd use, like, Steam VR, and you could use, like, something called the Monkey Mod Manager, which I'm not gonna explain anymore on how to get mods, because I really hate it whenever people have mods, unless it's, like, the camera mod, which is actually really nice. And... You can pretty much get like something like platforms, which is where you can like float on air, get a speed boost, which makes sense. You get a speed boost. Uh, you can be a ghost, which I don't mean like you can become like Daisy 09 and stuff. You can become invisible, pretty much. Invisibility. You can use a teleport gun, a tag gun, which I think is illegal. Yeah, I think so. Where you like shoot somebody and like you'll like instantly like tag them. Now, what I'm gonna explain through the legal ability, legal, legal ability, I don't even know if that's a word, but a legal mod menu would be where you can't use it inside of Publix. I think you can use modded Publix, but you can't use it inside Publix. And to make a, and to use mods inside of Publix, you would have to be the first one to join. You can't be like, the second or like the last or else i think that would be an illegal mod some like legal mod menus would be like the haunted ghost army or haunted ghost army i think that's his name i don't i'm not even sure or the bark mod menu which is a i think a really good one apparently I don't, I don't know i don't really use mods and then camera mod is i'm pretty sure just like legal because it's it doesn't give you any like effect or boost because it just like lets you have like an fov or like hold like a camera out to like show your character which i really wish i had um but now i'm gonna talk about the since i'm talking about mods i'm gonna start talking about server crashers now server crashes crashers are people that will 
ser use illegal mod menus, join your server, and crash it. This mainly happens to like popular people like live streaming or people who get player tracked, which I'll explain to player trackers in a second and I actually mean it this time. But yeah, mod modders like will like track you into like a server and well once they track you into a server they can just crash your server using like an illegal thing it'll like i don't know what they do i think they like duplicate the rig or they like spawn like an infinite infinite amount of balloons but they do something to crash your server and it's really annoying but yeah that's what a server crasher is you may not run into it if you're like really popular or if you're playing instead of a really popular person's server you will get kicked most of the time if you're the first one inside the server and somebody tries to crash your game you won't get kicked but you will lag out you may not get crashed but you will like lag pretty badly in your game will freeze for a second but now What was I gonna say? Okay, but now, time to get on to music. Now, pretty much for the whole entire game, or the whole entire time I've been explaining this video, I haven't talked a single bit about music, which is a nice part of the game. So, everywhere there's actually sirens, which if you, you can unmute and mute, and whenever you mute a this song, it will stop playing. Now, obviously, you unmute it, it'll start playing. And it plays every like specified time. Now there's different kinds of songs. There's daytime song in forest, nighttime song in forest. There used to be a Halloween song in forest, but now that's obviously removed since it's not Halloween. There used to be a song in caves, which I think is still hearable if you walk down to the bright time, but obviously they can't go in fully. There is a song inside of canyons, which is playing right now. There is a song, there's actually two songs. I think they're like randomized inside of City. It's like a nice gorilla store, hiffy, nice gorilla store, lo-fi. There's one up inside clouds, one inside of basement, one inside of beach map, and one inside of mountains. There's one inside of every single map at least. Two of them have two songs, obviously. Um. Now, I'm gonna actually talk about the, the ways of, like, reporting and, like, muting people. So, what I'm gonna quickly do, so, just in case if I run into somebody who may have a, like, soundboard and maybe playing, like, loud, like, music that's copyrighted, I'm gonna put it, turn off voice chat, and I'm just gonna put it on casual. Now, what is with this game? It, it, it actually, these things where you can mute people. Now, if I wouldn't have voice chat on, you could actually like, like touch like the mute button and you could just mute them forever. And like, they can't hear you. Now, obviously it would turn red and then you can unmute them by doing this. And then there's actually a report button like this. I, I, I really did not mean to do that. And what you would do is there'd be this. Now, there's for hate speech, there's for toxicity, and there's for cheating. Now, cheating consists of, like, illegal mods, speed boosts, or if you're out of the map. Toxicity is means that somebody, like, being rude, hate speech, well, that's pretty obvious. And then, well, that's pretty much all for <laughs> reporting and stuff. Now, let's go on to the next video. Okay, time to talk about something that isn't really well known if you're a new player at all. It's something called a scrim. Now... A scrim is for competitive teams. Now, competitive teams are a pretty much like uh, if you were to play like other games, let's like like I don't even know other games with like competitive teams. Probably if you were to play like any like PvP game, like just pretty much anything, you would run into like a competitive team that that would be like playing like competitively. Now, a scrim is pretty much where it's teams of threes or fours competing, competing against each other. And what happens is all lava monkeys will start on this table. The referee, which will keep track of time, will say, runners run. Now, what happens is the runners who are not it will actually run 
and go sit onto somewhere. They have a 10 second head start, the time doesn't start yet, and then they'll say taggers tag, and the referee will start the timer. On however long it takes for the runners to get tagged is their time. And three minutes is the time cap, so if you hit three minutes, that's just like the maximum amount of time that you can get. And there's something called a two second rule, which if if you're within two seconds of time, then well, you, you just redo the whole entire uh, like round. And then whoever ran the, the last round would actually tag the next round. So it would just be the completely opposite way. And let's just say like the first team got like one minute and 38 seconds of running, but then the other team got like two minutes and 54, then obviously team two would win. And I think it goes until like a certain amount of wins or something, or it's like best sort of like five rounds or sometimes even three. I think they recently actually turned out changed how they do the comp but though that's the old way of doing scrims now it's going to the next thing okay so time to explain like the like bonus things that I haven't really talked about yet so first thing is that there's a rocket now every once in a while this came with the launch update a rocket would launch off into the sky there'd be like a little like particle chair trail you could hear it and you can see it from pretty much every single map and well it's just a rocket that launches it doesn't really do anything except launch but something else i have waited to talk about is that if you come over here and let's just say you're exploring through city it's actually a little crack into the window. Now, you can get up here, and you can actually jump into this window. It does take a couple of tries, but once you get in here, you're actually on here. Now, this used to look a bit different until the game had updated. Now, there's this over here. So, this is actually the first floor, which this is caved off, which it not, which it actually hadn't, hadn't, would it, which it haven't, which it wasn't like uh, whenever they had came out with the holiday update. But if you actually come back here, there's actually a third floor. Now, there's one single thing on the third floor. Now, you can probably already see it. You may have seen people wearing this, but it's the golden mask. It costs 5000 This used to be like the most like rare cosmetic. Everybody used to be like, at the very start, whenever City first came out, everyone was like, oh, this is crazy. This is a crazy cosmetic. Like, and like nobody really like had it. So, it would be like a complete like flex if you had it. Like, like this. And most of the time whenever you started out, you couldn't buy like shiny rocks. Which are this. Which is this. And, well, so barely anybody had it. But people on Steam, I think some people on Steam could buy it. So, it was, it was either the equivalent of waiting... 50 days which is almost like two months or just buying it on steam which obviously the steam version is most of the time easier but now let's go on to something else i haven't talked about yet which is weather now inside of this map weather and day patterns so inside of here there's actually every once in a while the time will start to change and it will become like darker and darker and every once in a while it may start to rain and during the winter update i think like like the winter and christmas update there was actually like snow that would fall from the sky and you used to be able to pick up snowballs which i will talk about in a little bit now whenever it used to like rain the whole entire map would become dark and well it would rain it's just pretty much like a day and weather pattern which i haven't talked about yet and one other thing i haven't talked about is this little bug i don't know if this bug will be into the game for a while this little bug that floats around you can hold down the trigger and you can just kind of throw him around he's pretty cool he got added like two weeks ago the beach update and yeah you can just kind of throw him around you can also kind of do that to him throw him off the map but he will respawn back 
so now I'm gonna explain another thing which I said I would which is the snowballs now the snowballs are a thing obviously that actually works on in paint brawl so if you were to throw this at somebody in paint brawl they would lose a balloon just like the slingshot so let's just say I was with like my friend and I hit them with the balloon or I just hit them with the snowball they would actually lose a balloon just like just like paint brawl but this is actually all for this video this was a very long video I'm not even lying you you do not know how long I have actually been sitting here now this will actually look a bit shorter whenever I cut things up but this probably would take up like half of my computer storage but um thank you for watching um this is like my first time asking just because how long this video took please like and subscribe I rarely say this I don't think I ever really have but please do it after this long video my voice is actually getting sore which is the main reason why I'm ending this um you can tell me into the comments anything that I missed I may do another video on it probably in like five months though so because this was a lot goodbye